So you wanna calculate Chromebox Alpha in Excel? Let's talk about what it is, when to use it, and how to calculate it. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Griffin, and today we are going to be talking about how to calculate Chromebox Alpha in Excel. Chromebox Alpha is a measure of internal consistency for a set of items, a test, or a scale. And there are a couple key things that we need to talk about. So first, Chromebox Alpha is a measure of internal consistency. It's used to see if a set of items consistently measure the underlying construct. So within a scale, you typically have a couple items. You have two, three, four, sometimes even 20, 30, 50. You have a lot of items. And that is used to see how interrelated the items are. Are they really getting at the underlying construct? Scores for the Chromebox Alpha range from zero to one exclusively. So that means you can't go below and you can't go above. The literature has been kind of divided on this, but in general, 0.7 and above is considered a good Chromebox Alpha score and below 0.7 is considered a poor Chromebox Alpha score or Alpha coefficient. But there isn't a hard and fast rule that says a 0.69 isn't as good as a 0.71. But in general, those are the key guidelines. So anything above a 0.7 is considered good and anything below a 0.7 is considered poor. So a higher alpha coefficient supports internal consistency. It doesn't prove it. It shouldn't be used in isolation. It just supports internal consistency. A low alpha coefficient does not support consistency. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a bad scale. It just means for this one measure, you know, it's not necessarily consistent. And when we talk about the formula for Chromebox Alpha, we will see that it is a function of a couple different things. We are looking at the covariance between the items and the total item variance, and it is also a function of the number of items in the scale. So for Chromebox Alpha, the more items you have, typically the higher your alpha coefficient is going to be, and that's not always necessarily a good thing. You could have a really poorly designed scale or a scale that's measuring a bunch of different things, but because you have a hundred different items, you know, you may have a Chromebox Alpha that is technically acceptable. And one other thing, when you're working with Chromebox Alpha, it's important that when you are using a previously established scale, for example, like one that has been previously validated, that you measure Chromebox Alpha yourself, that you find your own alpha coefficient because for your specific circumstance or maybe the way that you administered your test, it still may not be perfect. And you just want to assess the internal consistency of that measure for your specific application. So let's talk about when to use Chromebox Alpha. So we're gonna talk about a little example. So I went on ChatGPT and I just said, give me a you know short item scale that I can do for this video. So this is a product satisfaction scale. And what I would do if I worked for a company, if I just wanted to see how satisfied customers were or people were off a specific product, I would ask them the following five questions. Number one, overall, am I satisfied with the product? Two, the product meets my expectations. Three, I'd recommend the products to others. Four, the product offers good value for the price. And five, if I had to buy this product again, I would. So I would give those questions to my people that I'm um, studying or that I want the answers from and they'd answer on some type of scale. So here I have a five point Likert scale. So for each question, they go one through five, one is strongly disagree and five is strongly agree. And what would happen is they'd give me one answer for each of the questions and I take all the scores, I put them in my calculator or I, you know, put them in a statistical program and I'd be able to calculate the Chromebox alpha. So the example that we're going to walk through shows that the alpha or the reliability score is 0.79. So based on these numbers given by George and Mallory, that means that this scale is acceptable to good. And like I said, in general, anything above 0.7 is considered good. So that gives me initial support that the scale is internally consistent in that it is measuring, in general, you know, product satisfaction. Now, to 100% make sure that you're only testing product satisfaction and not some type of other dimension or construct, it's important to do some type of factor analysis. But in general, just from a very simplistic level, Chromebox Alpha is going to provide you support that the items are measuring internal consistency for, in this case, product satisfaction. So 
We've talked about what it is and when to use it. Let's talk about how to calculate it. So let's go to calculation. So Chromebox Alpha is a measure of internal consistency. And what I want to do is I want to see how consistent it is. And there are a couple things that I need to do. If we look at this formula here, which I got off of Wikipedia, we see a couple different things. K are the number of items in my scale or the number of items in my measure. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the number of items in the scale divided by the number of items minus one, and we're gonna multiply it by this parentheses or what's in this parentheses right here. So we're gonna do one minus, and then we're gonna do the summation or the total of the summed variance of each item. And we're gonna divide that by the variance of total scores. So what does that mean? Let's kind of walk through it. So here I have five different questions. So that was my questions on the pen. And I had 10 people take these five questions. So you wanna make sure that you have enough people taking your scale and you have enough questions. So what we're going to do, we are going to calculate the variance of each item. We're gonna calculate the variance for each item. So we're gonna do that five times. And then what we are going to do is we're gonna add up the total score for each participant. So we're gonna do that for each, each participant. And down here, we're gonna put in the number of items that we have, the summed variance of each item. So we're gonna sum up everything that's in green. And then we are going to calculate the variance of the total score. So that's everything that's in blue. And then finally, we'll put it all together in this Chromebook Alpha calculator and it will calculate it for us. So let's start with question one. Let's calculate the variance of each item. So here I'm gonna do equals and I'm gonna do ver, and I'm gonna do ver dot s. So it estimates variance based on this sample and my sample's 10 people. So I'm gonna reference the 10 scores. So everything from participant number one to participant number 10. So the variance for the first question was 0.9. And if I copy and paste that over, it gives me all of the variances for each individual item. We're doing it by column, by item. So now I want to sum or total the scores for each participant. So we're not talking about variances, we're not talking about questions, we're just talking about the individual participant. So let's go ahead and sum or add up all of the questions for participant number one. So everything led to a 21 here, and I can copy and paste it all the way down, and we have the totals for each participant. So now if I go back to my formula, I can fill out this part of my calculation. How many items do we have? We have five questions or items, we have five. And now we need to calculate the summed variance of each item. So we can sum the individual variances that we have calculated here. This summation here, or this E looking character, that's called a summation. That means we need to add up or total all of these individual variances. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do equals sum, and I'm going to reference the variance of each item. So I'm gonna do questions one through five, which gives me a summed variance of 6.08889. And then I need to find the variance of the total scores. So I can do equals ver dot s, and I am going to find the variance for all of these totals for each participant. And I'm gonna hit enter. All right, so now we have calculated each part of our equation and we can plug it into our Chromebox Alpha formula. So here I'm gonna do equals and I'm gonna do K. So that is going to be five divided by, then we're gonna do five minus one. So essentially I'm doing five divided by four. And I'm gonna multiply that by everything that's in this parentheses. So the parentheses starts one minus and I need to subtract that by my summed variance of each item. So this is at 6.08, and we're going to divide that by the variance of total scores, this 16.7. So I'm gonna close parentheses here, I'm gonna hit enter, and I forgot a parentheses, but it says my Chromebox Alpha is 0.79455, and that is what we had seen in our pen example. So based on the data that I have right here, I have support that this scale has internal consistency or at least has some value of internal consistency. So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate Chromebox Alpha one last time. Let's do equals and let's do my K, which is five divided by K minus one, which is five minus one, which gives me four. And I'm gonna multiply that by 
one minus my sum variance for each item. So that is the sum of everything in green. So I added up everything in green and I'm gonna divide that by the variance of what I calculated in blue, which gives me a Chromebox Alpha of 0.79455. So this gives me an acceptable to good Chromebox Alpha. Now there are a couple things I wanna point out. Chromebox Alpha is typically the higher the better, but once you start getting too high, like above 0.95, that means that your questions are essentially very similar and they're asking the exact same thing. So if you have a Chromebox Alpha score of 0.99 or even 1.0, you may wanna look at what you're actually measuring. You may essentially be asking the same thing over and over and over again, where that's kind of the point of a scale is to assess the underlying construct or the underlying idea, but you don't wanna to be too similar. But that starts getting into some more advanced concepts of Chromebox Alpha. I hope this video helped you. Good luck with calculating your Chromebox Alpha, your internal consistency, your Alpha coefficient. Like and subscribe and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. And as always, have a great day and happy learning.